All right, welcome back to more of Zelda Deluxe Third Quest. Okay, after getting a bit of a detour to grab some goods, <clears throat> uh, we're gonna actually go to level six and um, <clears throat> hopefully finish it off in this part. I mean, because I've already done part of the level. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to get up there besides just walking up there. You gotta remember that there's no maze path in the third quest. The first two quests would have had the maze paths. Well, since I'm around the area, I as well see if I can at least get some refills. Magic refills or whatever. This is in the same spot as in the, at least the original second quest. Uh, I think the second quest deluxe was like on the right side or something, uh, right side of the map. You know, this one's in its, I guess, the normal spot for the <clears throat> second quest, the original second quest. All right, so we already did part of this level, so we can now start the other piece of this. It actually does pay to get the, uh, go out and get the fire boomerang, uh, it actually really helps you for this level. <clears throat> because you can, you know, stun all these, en most of these enemies, and a lot of these still do damage to them. Yeah, I could go up, but there's actually another lock behind there, so... <clears throat> You want to go to the right first. Yeah, so the beauty of the, uh, <coughs> uh, the fire boomerangs that it does white sword damage and still stunned. So you get kind of a two-for-one deal. I can't remember if that's a red candle or not. I don't remember if I actually bought the red candle in the last part. I think I did, actually. Yeah, I might as well get some quick refills out of this. Get my magic back up. Yeah, I think that's a red candle because that's a uh, one shotting the bats. And it's actually, the red candle's actually pretty good. Uh, and it is magical sword strength. Probably more useful when you get. You can probably see it more volume out of it in the fourth quest, actually. <clears throat> Let's see how I can put that to better use. At least I can hold plenty of cash, so I'm just gonna collect every bit of money I can find. Oh, got the magic light lights. So 
even if I can't get enough range to use my sword, I'm just gonna swipe away with my boomerang. It takes a little longer, but, you know, you can fire from pretty much any angle you want. Property of uh, this booming being able to stun bubbles, especially those sparks. <clears throat> A big bonus that you can stun them. some arrows in this room for a reason. You know, if the statues aren't shooting at you. Now, I think you can get to the boss, though, which is on a completely separate path. But uh, you want to go onto this bit of a detour because it actually leads you to the other item of this place that you actually need to get into level seven. So if you want to grind up uh, resources here, I guess this is a, you know one source you can use. You know, all you need to get is a clock first. I looked at my fire booming to get distance, so I don't have to you know all this all these flames don't really you know, concern me too much because I can. Snipe away from a distance. So yeah, you want to grind up some resources. I guess you can do it. You, know, you can do it this way. And it really just depends on whether you know when you get the clock. And if you get it quick enough, then you can really grind up. Trebles are gonna res respawn, you know, again, you can use that as a base to get some quick money and stuff. And luckily, this is actually a pretty linear path. It's gonna take you to the other item at this place.
bit on magic. Uh, this is actually another source you can use for <coughs> grinding up resources. Because there are enough bat robes in this room. <coughs> All you do is just let them multiply up bats. And I think, actually, you're safe on the top row. <coughs> or at least safer than the bottom. And then you can just let them multiply. And you just have to watch out for the clocks, whereas with the, you know, Zolt Trebles, you actually do want a clock. So a candle is a good way to take out these bats, a uh, red candle, a one-shot KO on these, uh, Bats, or if you have a magic sword, whichever works. <clears throat> so you can grind up some money here. Get anything for this room, though. Um, let me see. Which I'm not sure if you gain anything for clearing this room. Money to buy the other two items from the shop. <clears throat> okay, not much in this room. Good old half tile tricks work perfectly against those things. little detour to pick up another key. And I think, remember this quest, assuming you don't buy any keys, I believe it's a one-to-one <clears throat> -one ratio. At least until you can get the magic key. This room can get a little bit messy. Get the half tiles going. Well, at least I can hold more ammo. <clears throat> Might as well pick up everything I can find. up all the freebies you find in this place. Well, that's kind of odd to get a fairy for this room. <clears throat> kind of an odd prize. Okay, there's your rod. Now if you actually light up the room, <clears throat> see what you need to get through this. It's a kind of a little two-step process. And get rid of this block with the flute, and then you can use that extra key that you got from just a bit ago to scoop up the magic wand.
So now that that little, <clears throat> little detour is out of the way. And again, if you want to try to grind up, uh, you know, you can do that here. It's just kind of convenient to get stuck in that middle area, because then you can, you know, they can't really move anywhere. So, yeah, the quicker you get the clock, the better. So then all you do is just uh, let all these zoles keep multiplying. Um, I don't know what the <clears throat> enemy limit counter is. I mean, how many enemies can you have in this place? Do this long enough, uh, <clears throat> scoop up some quick cash. And then once you got enough of them multiplying, you know, you start taking some of them out. As long as you keep a <clears throat> fair supply of these uh, trebles handy for the to multiply, and it doesn't take them that long to uh, reform into the the, the full soul. You can do this as long as you want, just to uh, let these guys multiply. <clears throat> Which I was kind of curious to see how much stuff I'm going to get from this in the end. I'm getting plenty of clocks now, so... <laughs> the first time I went through this room, I couldn't find any clocks. I mean, I got like three or four clocks. So, all you do is let them multiply. I don't know. Again, I don't know how many sprites can fit on the screen at a time. There's gotta be some upper limit. Because I know all the, the bat robes, they can only spawn so many bats. And then it won't, you know, once you fill up the whole screen, it's. Or, you know, as many bats as possible is gonna, you know, they, the bat ropes don't, you know, spawn any more bats. Yeah, so you can actually get a good supply of stuff. You just let them multiply up enough, and <clears throat> how many are, like, stacked on top of each other. What, five, ten sometimes, maybe more? Money and then uh, um, supplies as well, like bombs, arrows, etc. So after you, you know, after you do this long enough, you know, you pick up enough, you know, supplies to your satisfaction. And the thing is, again, you can just repeat this over and over again because they'll respawn as soon as you re-enter the room. And again, you don't 
don't need that many trebles to start with. You really only need one. And just, you know, let it keep multiplying. So, you know, once you're satisfied, I'm just gonna clean up this room. Pick up all the goods that drop now. And I don't think it really takes that long, actually. You know, you just scoop up all the goods that drop here and you get a lot of it. because the clocks are permanent, so you can just stay in there as long as you want, just... You know, grind up as much as, uh, as much... as much stuff as you want, basically. I mean, I really have enough to buy all the other stuff. Uh, the other two items that are 550 rupees. You gotta go with three in this room, so you gotta have to get those silver arrows from the lower path. And luckily, the bottom door is open, so I don't have to be frantically moving around trying to dodge this thing. So just kind of be patient when you, you know, fight this thing. It's pretty hard to dodge the three bullets. Especially when you don't have to be directional movement. light up this room after you take out the Goma, because right now you don't see what you're going to reveal after you, you know, you take it out. Oh, I got most of my arrows back. Yeah, so you actually reveal these stairs. So if you don't like the room up yet, you won't see that. Another somewhat messy room with the blue wizard oak, but really not that big a deal if you have purple ring. Even more so if you have the fire blue ring. Things are pretty much a joke. Yeah, this room can be a little bit tricky to handle. I guess technically you're supposed to use your your wand uh, Toss the shots into the reflectors. Because this isn't a very good room to work with. Yeah, this is kind of a difficult room to work with on this. might take a bit of patience to do this. Because normally the easier rooms you have the whole room to work with, but here you have a very limited space. Uh, but luckily, <clears throat> uh, when it, you know, teleports over the water and stuff, usually it's gonna land on one of the reflectors, and you can just, 
it's gonna whack itself as it tries to fire at you. So this is just more of a matter of a, uh, being a little bit patient. Oh, thank goodness I was blocked by this reflector. I Made mean, that very convenient. Now, this room, actually, you can go down. Um... <clears throat> A little bit of space down here we haven't explored yet. Now here's where your fire boomerang comes in real handy. Now you don't have to dodge that quite as aggressively. Although in this room you have a bunch of blue bubbles, but assuming you can bomb this wall first. Okay, for this boss key, uh, you actually need the, uh, the, war the rod. So when you see this kind of little design here, uh, you might try your flute first. But you'll find it does nothing, then you use your, um, the rod and it will open that up. This room could be a pretty much a total nightmare if you come into this unprepared. Uh, pretty much the fire boomerang is life saving in this room. <laughs> that you can stun these things uh, buys you a lot of time because otherwise this room can be can get really messy really fast you know, spamming you know all their rings of fire but you know, by stunning them you can slow down all the action and there's your magic jar your magic expansion right there so if you don't come in here with the fire boomerang, that room can be a real nightmare. But if you bring the boomerang in, uh, fire boomerang is, you know, a lot more manageable because you can stun those whiz ropes. Okay, this room just a <clears throat> a trio of dig doggers. And you gotta just kind of spam the doorway to an extent. And your fire booming gets just free damage on there as you whittle them down. Boomerang's a little slow, but, you know, it works. Especially if you can stun them. You know, I could use some refills here. Yeah, this room can get a bit messy. I'm gonna try to get a better setup on this room. Yeah, I might use that, um, bat for refills, actually. It might not be such a bad idea to let it spawn more bats. Now that I've already gotten rid of kind of the bigger threats in this room. Uh, the, uh, the, the other two wizards are already down. <laughs> so I can just let the bat rope just 
start creating more bats. Because nothing else really does that much damage right now. Although there's only one bat robe, so it's gonna take a while for it to <clears throat> generate more bats. But, you know, no rush. Especially when you get the refills. Got a lot of fairies there. There's your map pretty much in the useless spot. Okay, here you're already fighting a <clears throat> level 5 land mola. Yeah, um. Again, your fire boomerang is going to be very, very handy for this. Because you are not going to go try to chase this thing down. I think this thing does a <clears throat> part and a half per hit. I guess you can try your... If you have red candle, you can try that. Try to get some uh, red candle shots in there, because again, that's as strong as your magic sword. So any hits you can get with that, that's a bonus prize for you. That damage should add up pretty quickly, actually. Because it's probably hitting, you know, if it runs through that whole, that flame, it's gonna hit every part, basically. That's gonna make a faster progress than my boomerang. Not saying the boomerang's a bad weapon, boomerang still works well for diagonal sniping, especially if I run out of magic. And the boomerang's a little better when there are fewer parts to deal with. Getting some mileage. I don't. I'm, I may have used it a little bit in the first two quests, but maybe not that much. Here, you can really see it get some mileage. And your boomerang might be a little better for this last piece. If there aren't that many parts left. It's actually a pretty simple battle, um, given the you still you can kind of hide in the doorway. Uh, otherwise, if you're gonna try to take it on a melee style, you're gonna want to stand in between tiles, and then you want it to approach you vertically because I think it tends to miss. But again, fire boomerang, and then if you have the red candle, that's kind of a little bonus, makes things a little faster. Alright, so that is level 6 down, and the rod is going to be used to find level 7. And got plenty of uh, arrows and bombs, rupees, uh, plenty of supplies to work with. So, we'll take a break at this point, and next part we'll start heading towards uh, level 7. Alright, I'll see you guys later.